Ah, uh, yes, I see the I see the parable here. You are doing the worm, are you not? I don't know if that's what it's called, but it always kind of looks like a worm to me. Or at least like a sea snake, I don't know. Well, I was going to say, you can also do like the... <laughs> my mom's much better at it than I am. I'm not going to do the actual worm. I'll bust my chin. I used to be able to do the worm. I could do it backwards and forwards. Yeah. I'd hurt myself, I feel like. I'm going to say, I know that XQC did the worm while on a debate with H3H3, which he lost. Dude, how pathetic do you have to be to lose an argument to H3H3? Seriously. Mm. Anyway, uh, yeah. H, uh, but... He did the worm, but he did like a a sad worm. It was just like the it was like the you know it was like he got down on his knees, crawled, bunched up, crawled, bunched up, crawl. It's like it's the sad worm. And this is one that struck your interest when you saw the thumbnail for it, and you were like, "The worm, animated horror story, huh? I wonder what that's about." It's so spooky season right now. So I figured this seemed like something to be. Worth checking out, hopefully. Absolutely. I agree with that. Who made it? <clears throat> this is by a group called uh, Don't Walk Home Alone After Dark. I don't think I've seen anything by them before. Me neither. I don't... But they got 46,000 subscribers. Yeah. And uh, this has 43,000 likes. Only like <laughs> 800 dislikes. So. Yeah. And 543,000 views. It's 11 days old, and uh, apparently, well, this one, uh, this struck your interest, so we're going to check it out. We're going to see uh, see what's up. You guys should go give them a subscription. Yes, please do. Uh, cause Especially if this is it, good and you like it. If you all haven't seen this yet. You should actually go watch it yes, before you watch it. Go watch it before this. we watch it uh, on here, because pause please. This, go yeah, watch pause it. this then right now. come back and see what we think. Yeah, go watch it on theirs. Come back here, and then we can rewatch it together. Give them all the love and all those all the support that they need because they deserve it, y'all. They really do. If you all just will go over there and click the subscribe button if you haven't already, that's going to be however many views we got on this video added to their account. So yeah, that would be awesome of you guys. Yep, yeah, that little button right there. As a matter of fact, oh, there we go. Done added them to the subscription. So. Anyway, we got the worm animated horror story queued up here. Let's check it out. Here we go. Birthday massacre? I think so. Kind of Scott Pilgrim -y in terms of the animation. Art style. Oh, yeah. Hello? Intelligent for her to pull out her phone and start using it as a flashlight immediately. <coughs> That's realistic. That's what I do. Yeah. Same. Also, I noticed that right here. Uh, this is like 2D style, you know, like for the most part. Mm. This is achievable in 2D. But then right here, when you're going around the car, like this is 3D. Like you can tell, like the that's a 3D model right there that the light's going off of. Uh, I don't know if this is fully rendered in 3D or what, but either way, I love the art style. I love the look. It, this is just really... Really, really good. Yeah, I it's like good this. use of the 3D if that's what they're doing there. Oh yeah. Either that or it's definitely like a, a good illusion of 3D. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Nope. Close the garage door and get inside. 
or walk across the street. <coughs> um, what? Those aren't street lights. Those aren't street lights. Oh my lord. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. Is this a dream? I guess going inside wasn't a good idea. Is this a dream? Sparrow Moon was not at all what I thought she would be. I wasn't given much time to go over her case file before our first appointment. But from what I had read, I half expected some kind of uncontrollable monster to walk through the door. She wasn't anything like that. She was quiet and guarded. Smaller in person than what I had imagined from her photograph. A perfectly normal 17-year-old girl. That made it even harder to believe she was capable of doing the things that she did. She was the last surviving member of the so-called Woodfield Five, a group of kids all from the same remote northern town who suffered a series of unexplained, at times violent, mental breaks. Clinical notes suggested some kind of shared psychosis though unlike anything I'd ever heard of in my 20-year practice. <clears throat> huh. By all accounts, Sparrow had an unremarkable childhood. No indications of behavioral difficulty, good grades in school, active social life, no family history of mental illness to speak of. Her mother had been part of some offbeat spiritual commune years earlier, but had left that behind when Sparrow was quite young and eventually remarried. There was nothing to suggest any kind of underlying trauma or abuse, though as you come to find in my line of work, that's not always so obvious. The only path to understanding what really happened in Woodfield was Sparrow herself. And that would prove more difficult than anyone anticipated. Spasmenig spasminigal spasminigalia phobia somnophobia So she has a fear of sleep. I can Google what the other one is real quick. At least that's what I think. Because I know insomnia is basically like the inability to sleep. But somnophobia, I believe, is a fear of sleep. Uh, whereas spasmin, spasminigala, spasminigaliophobia. Fear of broken glass. Spasminigalophobia? Mm-hmm. And then look up somnophobia, make sure that I'm not... I'm pretty sure you're right on that. <clears throat> S-O-M-N-I phobia. Yep, fear of sleep. That's what it sounded like. So she has a fear of broken glass, which I can I can relate to to a certain degree. Somnophobia, the fear of sleep. When you look at when, when there's certain beliefs that people have about sleep, I can see why there some people would have a fear of sleep. It's Freddy Krueger. That's that's what this is reminding me of, <laughs> because. You remember in in uh, you know Nightmare on Elm Street there was a group of kids mm -hmm. that all suffered from the same sleep like sleep demon kind of thing and were all afraid to go to sleep because of what awaited them in their nightmares. Maybe that's what's up with her is that it's the same deal. I don't know. It's either that or this is just some sort of <coughs> entity that's essentially driving them to feed people to it or something, and that's why people think they've turned violent. But it's pretty much they're probably doing it out of fear of the entity. I guess. It's kind of like Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. He's feeding the wall. <laughs> yeah. Until eventually he just kind of gives up on it because he gets sick of it. 
I learned very little over the first weeks of our sessions together. Sparrow was often uncooperative, careful never to allow the growing familiarity between us to weaken her resolve. I was not as strong. I became unreasonably attached to her. The endless medical diagnostics revealed nothing we didn't already know. She barely slept. The scratches on her arms were self-inflicted. And aside from high blood pressure, she was physically healthy. No one was certain about what exactly was wrong with her. And she was getting worse. Weeks turned to months, and I was running out of time. The courts had determined that unless I could demonstrate conclusive progress in her treatment, Sparrow would be transferred to an isolated psychiatric ward and out of my care. I could have walked away at that point. I probably should have. But what I wanted, what I've always wanted, was answers. After all that we'd been through, she wasn't a kid to me anymore. She wasn't a monster either. She was a puzzle to solve. Sodium pentothal can be administered to induce something called narcosynthesis, a state between asleep and awake where the subject is highly suggestible. In most places today, Truth the zero. practice is frowned Basically, upon. yeah. Normally, I would never consider such a treatment, but given the circumstances, my options were limited. I knew full well that this could risk professional censure, perhaps even my career itself. That didn't seem to matter at the time. After the injection sparrow was brought to my office, we were left alone, and I asked her to count backwards from ten. Though before she even got to five, it was clear she knew something was wrong. Her breathing became shallow, and her eyes darted around rapidly. She began talking about a mist coming into the room that only she could see. She could hear a voice from within it calling to her. The drug had disoriented her to such a degree that I don't even think she recognized me. Sparrow's small size and chronic fatigue made the dosage I administered tricky. She drifted kind of see where they're uh, for several kind of skirting around animation budget by telling more than showing certain things. Yeah. Which, I mean, like, I guess is understandable to an extent if it's like a, you know... A, well, if it saves on animation, but yet... A low-budget type of deal, you know? Well, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of stuff that we had to cut around for hours whenever we made our film and all that. There's stuff that I wanted to include, but I knew we couldn't include. Then there's stuff that, last minute, I told Jake, this has to be in there. And he's like, okay, if you can make it happen, we'll, we'll do our best. And I made it happen, and Jake was like, oh shit, I didn't actually think that was going to work, but you actually made it work. Like, the wall, for instance. Mm. That that part, I knew I had to have in there, because you were adamant on it, and when I saw what... Because that was the whole thing I told Jake whenever I first pitched that to him. I was like, I would pitch this, but I think this particular thing would be impossible for us to do on any kind of budget we could come up with. And he was like, don't worry about that, just write it and we'll figure out how to do it later. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to be pissed if figuring out how to do it later involves not including the thing that I wanted in there. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And the thing that you really wanted in there was that shot. Yeah, so thankfully it's actually in there. And I'm just like, yes. And it actually looks pretty damn good, mm -hmm. all things considered. But you got to thank Brian for the VFX on that, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he killed it. Anyway. Several minutes. <clears throat> when Lucid, I redirected her asking if she could tell me what the voice she heard was saying. After a long pause, she finally whispered, Little bird. 
At that point, Sparrow was not interested in answering any of my questions. She just spoke, and I listened. She said that it knew. It knew that was what he used to call her. The old man. But the voice wasn't a man's. It was something else. She said it comes with the mist. That it takes things from you and it grows. Adding to what it's taken from others. It eats you from the inside. She didn't know its name, but called it the worm. As Sparrow lapsed into unconsciousness, I was left with more questions than answers. I arranged to have her return to her room and resigned myself to the idea that I might never get the chance to understand the truth, that I had failed. I destroyed the records of our last session to prevent the review board from finding out what I had done. Yeah, like imagine like giving someone that serum and then that's what you get. <laughs> I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, the the mind, okay, the secular mind, which doesn't believe in the supernet, basically they Occam's razor anything, anything mythical, anything spiritual, anything that is outside of the bounds of what of what human knowledge has accomplished. They basically Occam's razor it out because they're just like, well. If you can't measure it, it can't affect anything. Therefore, Occam's razor, and I don't even consider it. Mm -hmm. Now, I guarantee you when he hears that, he's like, this is probably, in his mind, deep, like, like deep psychosis to the point of where she is using that as an excuse or a justification for what she has done. In his mind, like, what has happened with the rest of the group that she was involved with. Mm. And I guess... But, I mean, you could wonder certain different things about it. You could be like the old man, but the voice wasn't an old man's. And it's like, okay, was there actually, like, a man that, like, goaded them into committing these atrocities, atrocities. or whatever happened? <clears throat> or, like, is it, like, that she has psychosis and she's hearing a voice that doesn't actually exist? In which case, that's weird because it's like a group psychosis in that case because this has clearly happened with like four other people that she was close with. Yeah. And it's like, what is happening? You know, like yeah, clearly like, that would just be very strange to hear, like in that situation. Well, of course. And, you know, and at logical... that point, I would maybe start to also like consider like a cult angle. I'd be like, wait, like maybe this old man was like a Charles Manson type figure. And probably know? the mother who was involved in that religious stuff. She may have left it, but something something else was left behind. Mm. Like the ramblings of that old man uh, still rang true somehow with her and had an impact on her. I don't know. There's a lot that could be discerned and deciphered from it. Yeah, like you said, basically more questions than answers from that. Yeah. It was over. Or at least so that's what I thought. thought. I think he or I think it was that night the dream started. <laughs> I guarantee you that's why she was being so why she was buttoned up as much as she was because she didn't want to say it because little bird and the worm I think are the trigger phrases that will cause that will cause whatever is after her to come after someone else. Maybe. But also, I think you might be right about it being dream-related. Huh. I don't want to say anything, because I don't want to give spoilers for our short film. But just, hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Looks familiar. In the office. Hey, Mr. Kitty. Shh. 
Wait. Come back. Oh, buddy. What you? You okay? He's like, I'm getting hungry. Of course you are. Look at him. He's like, he's needing at least snack There he time. is. Come here. Hey, chunk of luck. Don't hurt yourself, Nick. Oh, there he is. There's the <laughs> chunky lad. Yeah. The mist. Uh oh. The, for a second, I thought it was just going to be like the Nightmare on Elm Street stairs, like the marshmallow stairs. Yeah. They actually sank completely into the floor. Are you in the upside down now? Sparrow. What? Doctor. I'm sorry. Oh. Sort of eldritch horror. Every time I go to sleep, it's the same. It doesn't really matter how the dream begins. Eventually, the mist will come. And with the mist, always comes the worm. Just like she said it would. You can't run. That never works. It won't let you. The best you can hope for is that you wake up quick. Before it begins to feed. At first, I told myself that it would go away. It could be a simple anxiety-induced aberration brought on by the stress of dealing with the case. No. But it was soon obvious that wasn't it. The nightmares didn't stop. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. It wasn't long before my colleagues began to take notice. Things got so bad I had no other choice. I called in every favor, pulled every string I could, and arranged access to Sparrow at her current facility. I needed answers more than ever. And she still had them. I almost didn't recognize her at first. She looked strong and alert. A stark contrast to the tired girl that I had spent all that time with. Uh, might go person to person. Might have passed on to him. Yeah, because it seems like maybe it stopped bothering her when it went to him. Maybe. And maybe once it's done with him, it'll come right back to her. I didn't have to like ask any follows. questions. Basically. It's this time. Just by looking at me, she knew all too well what was happening. We sat down, and Sparrow Moon gave me what I needed. The worm is some kind of parasite. A pathogen, an ancient thing passed from host to host, manifesting in their dreams, feeding on their deepest fears. It will not stop, always hungry for more. It won't kill you. It doesn't want you dead. It wants what any good virus wants. To propagate. To be passed on. To be fed. Sparrow tried to hold it inside of her. 
to protect others. She thought that if she could fight it long enough, it would die with her. But she passed the worm to me the same way that it had been passed to her. Just by telling me about it. Ah. Uh, so, yep. You have to believe me. I am sorry for this. Now that I've told you, I don't know when. But sooner or later in your dreams, the mist will come. Damn, okay. Let's see what they did here now. And with the mist, comes the worm. always comes the worm. Okay. All right. That was good. Yeah. I like that. I like the payoff. Like the fourth wall break payoff. That's pretty nice. That was really good. I mean, technically he was talking to us the whole time. It just it didn't really register. It's like, okay, yeah, it spreads when someone's told about it. And it didn't register until the very end. It's like, that's why he's now been telling us you. about it. It's like, ah, oh, you son of a you, bitch. I'm like, aha. <laughs> It's like now it's like I'm not gonna lie, like this is probably the first time in a while I might be slightly paranoid when I go to bed tonight. You know what I mean? Like I know it's just Fair an enough. animated short, but I will probably think about it for a second and be like, God, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, that's uh really, really good actually. I like that a lot. So good job, guys. Hell yeah. Well done. Well done. Uh so anyway. I'm going to send this to my buddies as well and tell them to give it a watch. I guarantee you they're going to message you back and be like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Chance you passed will, it on to me. Chance will probably really like this. He'll be like, dude, that was dope. I, I guarantee he'll like this. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, God. So, yeah, the worm, ladies and gentlemen. Are you now infested with the worm? Do you feel like if you go to sleep, will you see it? I don't know. What Maybe. happens if you tell a whole bunch of people at one time, you know? Does it spread to all of them? I don't know. Does Maybe it, that's what happened with all of Actually get to reproduce that... that way? Maybe. So that might have been the thing. It's like one friend told the whole friend group, and then they all ended up with it at the same time. Yeah, and they all died, and all of them died save for her. I guess the only way to get rid of it is to tell somebody else about it. Yeah. But if you tell multiple people about it, it could, like, multiply at that point. So. And now he's told 543,000 people about it. <laughs> and now 543,000 people are going to be angry about it, angry at him about it. Well, 544, or 543,001, because, uh, like, you know, I mean, we, we both watched it at the same time. So, well, so 543,002. Our one view was technically two. Yeah, 543,002. Yeah, I guess so. So yeah, that was uh, that was good though. Uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed. And if you want to see more from uh, Don't Walk Home at Alone After Dark, feel free to uh, click their name in the title of the video. And uh, if you want to see more from us, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. And that's Vega. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you later, everybody. Peace. <laughs>